Okay, okay, okay. What you saying, producers? E9, the track. Back on your box. Yo, apologies for the lack of content this month. My phone that I've been using to film my videos has been damaged for the last few months and recently it got to a point where I just couldn't use it anymore to film, so I had to get it fixed. Bite the bullet, it weren't cheap, but yo, we're good. We got the phone back, we're back in business. So let's get into making some beats. Today's video, I don't really have anything in mind that I'm looking to make in particular, but what I will do for you guys is I'm gonna touch on my most commonly used apps for making beats of Beatmaker 3. It's not gonna be an app review, but I will touch on them, give you a little breakdown about what they do, how I use them, and I'll drop links in the description for you to check them out on the App Store if you are interested in purchasing them. But before we get into this cook up, guys, I've created a new YouTube channel strictly for beats. It's called e and the Track Beats. I'm gonna be putting all of my beats on there going forward. All of my beats that I've made in tutorials in the past and any new beats that I do make from tutorials going forward are going to be going on that channel. So for you guys that are subscribed to this channel, that you've watched my tutorials in the past and you want to hear the final results of those beats, head over to that channel now. Check out the beats that I've got uploaded already. That's that hot newness I've been working on these last couple of weeks. Show some love, drop a comment, drop a like. You know how the algorithms work. Let's get these subs up on that channel. And if you're new to this channel, you haven't subscribed already, in this channel, I drop weekly tutorials on music production on the iOS platform, in particular the iPad. But if you're interested in hearing what kind of beats can be made on the iPad or the quality of beats you can make on the iOS platform, head over to my Beats channel as well. Subscribe to that channel also. Drop some likes. Show some love. But yeah, let's get into it. So some of you know already, I like to use samples and loops to get my beat making process started because it just makes the workflow quicker. I can get into making a beat a lot faster when I'm using loops than when I'm making my own melodies. But because I want to touch on apps that I use most commonly on Beatmaker 3, I'm not using loops today. No loop of the day. We're making our own melody from scratch. And for that, I'm going to be using my probably my most favorite instrument app on, on the iOS platform, Pure Civ Platinum by Gospel Musicians. Imagine Omnisphere and Nexus came together and had a baby. And that baby was like, nah, I can't live in your shadow. I'm going to go and live my own life and do my own thing. I'm jumping over to the iOS platform and making a name for myself. Pure Sniff Platinum, guys. So for me, I think the Nexus element of this app is it's great rumpler. You've got a lot of great sounds coming out of it. Keyboards, pianos, guitars, brass instruments. You've even got choir noises, plucked sounds. But the Omnisphere element of this app for me is its sound design capabilities. If you're coming from a desktop door environment and you're familiar with Omnisphere and your ability to create patches, this is the app for you. You've got up to four slots available to drop sounds from the Rompler, combine them together to make your own patches, do loads of stuff with this app in terms of sound design. You can even determine where in the keyboard, where which octaves certain sounds come into play. But yeah, I love it. It's, it's my go-to app for making any melodies from scratch. So we're going to use it today. I think I'm going to start out with a guitar sound. So let's find something in the guitar sounds. Let's go for the goes. Let's go with the flamenco sound. Let's try and make something with that. I'm just going to set my loop. Here's a quick tip for you guys. Now, you all know the metronome is helpful with working out your timing and helping you to stay on time. But sometimes that metronome could be too loud. There's a way to turn that down to be maker free. You go over to the metronome. Tap and hold opens up the metronome settings. So you've got metronome enabled for normal playback. You can have that turned on or off. I've got that off. When active while recording, well, because this is the first melody I'm recording in, I kind of need it to set my time in. So I've got that yes. But here you've got volume set to zero dB. I like to turn mine down all the way down to about 22 dB. That's That way it's, it's, it's audible enough, but not so loud that it's annoying, especially for you guys in the recording. You're going to be hearing that click, click, click going. So I'll turn that down now. Right, let's record that pattern in. So this pattern sounded good. I just want to edit the velocity of some of these notes in particular. To do that, make sure you've got your last two tools selected first of all, then open up your pattern MIDI window. And all you have to do is simply highlight the note that you want to edit the velocity for, and you'll see that its velocity is highlighted in the pattern MIDI window. And if you select that node, you can drag it up and down to adjust its velocity. I'm just going to do that for a couple of these that are a bit too high. I want, to, I want them to stay around the same region. 
I'm just going to take a couple of these down where the guitar strum is just a bit too strong. In addition, if I wanted to adjust the velocity of the entire pattern all together and bring all the notes up or bring all the notes down, if I just double tap on the lasso in the pattern MIDI window that selects all of the velocities of all the MIDI notes, and I can drag them up and down just by selecting an area in that selection window. That means I can pull up the velocities of all of them together, or I can bring them down together. But I think we're good with where they are at the moment, so let's just hear that for a last time. <laughs> So I'm going to start adding some effects to this. The first thing I'm going to do for this melody is I'm going to throw in an equalizer just to get rid of the muddiness of the low ends that are not going to be heard in the track, but they're going to interfere with any bass that we put in later on in the beat. You want to be sure to cut out any unnecessary low frequencies or high frequencies that are not heard to the naked ear, but are present. Otherwise that muddies the mix. So I'm going to throw in an equalizer. The equalizer I like to use, and you've seen me use it many times before, Equalizer by Tone Booster. It's a great affordable plugin compared to the Fab Filter Alternative, which is a lot more expensive. Both of them do the same job for me in my eyes. They both show a graphical representation of the input coming through, so you can determine what you're going to cut away, what you're going to add to your frequencies. Um, the only difference being, I think, for some people, usability and how it looks on the screen. That's just the only, and I think probably the brand. Got a great feature too as well, where you can solo out the frequency section that we're working with so we can hear what we're cutting away and what we're adding. So if I just turn that on, the little headphone icon here, I play it. So here, we're not cutting anything away, but as we drag this along, you can hear the low frequencies that we're cutting out. You see that they're so they're so faint, you're not gonna really hear them in the naked ear. They're not really necessary to the melody itself, but having them present in the mix can muddy up the mix when you start throwing in your 808s and throwing in your lower end sounds. So as I drag this along, you can hear more of what I'm gonna be cutting away. So I think I'm gonna leave it at this. Right, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna have a play around with another app that I like to use a lot, especially for my drill beats and trap beats, and that's Halftime Effect. That's right, I said it. We've got Halftime Effect on the iOS platform, brought to us by Blayas, Slow Machine. It's a great app, we finally got it. I've been waiting for an app like this for a long time. There have been many others that have tried to do it, but haven't quite got it, haven't quite got the real-time effect to work, but this app does it. As soon as you press play, the Halftime is working. Let's check this out. It's very similar to your cable guy. I think it's cable guys. Very, very similar to your cable guys halftime effect that you guys will be familiar with on the desktop doors. You've got your standard loop size settings. You've got your speed settings, the typical one being one bar and half speed. You've also got your filter selection as well. So you can determine how much of the sound is being affected by the effect. And then on the other side here, which is a great nifty addition, is a time stop effect, or what I call it is a tape stop effect. So if you want to do a tape stop to your whole track or you want to do a tape stop to the melody just to add some variation to your beat this is a great tool too and they finally you've got the sequencer which allows you to combine your half time and tape stop effects over a sequence of view i don't really use this a lot i'm going to focus more on the slow down half time effect for this particular melody so let's check out how that sounds on the, the half time effect on I think I like it combined with the original melody itself, you know? All right, so that sounded good. What I've done to this pattern is I've duplicated over 16 bars now and added a variation to the second half of the melody. What I'm gonna to do to this melody, I'm gonna add some reverb and some tape effects. And what I like to use for those is Mixbox by IK Multimedia. You've heard me mention it before. It's a great plugin. It's a plugin with a whole load of other plugins. It's basically a multi-effects tool that has upwards of 70 effects on it. Anything from dynamics, you know, compression, EQs, uh, modulation, reverb, delay, all of that stuff. So it's, it's a great app um, 
for the price that I got it at. It's a steal. Hopefully it's still the same price for you guys when I put the link in the description. Definitely check that out. So for this, I'm going to throw in a tape cassette effect to give it that vinyl effect, that old school, that old school effect. Let's see how that sounds. That's a reverb as well. Just a just a touch of reverb, not too much. I'm gonna use a digital reverb effect for this. I'm just gonna tweak its mix as I play it, just so I get it to taste. And finally, what I'm gonna do to this melody is I'm gonna add a equalizer to the end of the chain and just add a high pass filter way up to the high end so it gives that real sort of radio effect. So what you might want to do in this situation now is you might want to free up pure synth platinum so you can create another melody. Maybe you haven't got maybe you haven't got an iPad Pro, maybe you've got an older iPad and the CPU ain't really gonna cut it having multiple instances of pure synth. So what you can do and what I like to do from time to time is bounce out my MIDI patterns into an audio file. Once I know the once I know the melody is set, once I know the effects are right, I may want to process the pattern even more and I don't want to take up the CPU with adding so many effects to it. So let me bounce out this MIDI pattern into an audio file, and that's simple to do on Beatmaker 3. You can do it from the sequence of view. You tap this plus track button here, create a new audio track. If I double tap on the audio track now, that takes me over to the mixer. First step, double tap on the tab at the top, that arms it for recording. Next, we wanna tap and hold on it, and we wanna tap on audio input so we can determine where our audio is coming from that we wanna record. If you're recording vocals or live instruments like a guitar, like I do sometimes, you'd go into hardware input and select your audio interface input. But if I do that, that's gonna affect the vocals, so I'm not gonna show you that. But for this example here, we're selecting internal, our audio is coming from bank A1, which is pure synth platinum. So we select that. So that's been selected. The track's been armed. What I need to do in my particular case is I need to reset this fader to zero. Otherwise it won't record anything. Let's reset that to zero. Let's just reset all of this to zero. So it's, it's an isolated track. Go back to our sequencer. I'm gonna turn off the looping as well so we can capture the reverb and capture the halftime effect and not cut it off. And let's record. So the first thing I like to do once I've bounced my MIDI out to an audio file, double tap on that audio file, go down to edit sample at the bottom of the window here, tap on process and normalize. Normal settings there, apply. Now we're getting good signal coming through. That means we've got something good and loud enough to work with if you want to process it further. And what you need to remember after bouncing out the audio is to unarm the audio track again. You don't want to keep recording MIDI patterns to this audio track every time you press record. So unarm that. And now this track is dedicated to that bounced out audio file. If you want to do any more bouncing out of uh, MIDI patterns, you need to create a new audio track and repeat the process that I've just shown you. But from here, there's a lot we can do with this audio file. Um, because we've recorded it in, Beatmaker 3 has created a folder structure for this project now and has saved this audio file in. So if I go to, to my folder view here, go out to my sessions and go into my project, you can see if recordings and there is the audio file. So that file is there now. What I could do if I wanted to, I could go to one of my banks. I could take that file and drag it in. Take that file into my sampler. I could chop it up. I can I can do a lot of stuff with it. I could reverse the pattern. There's a lot of things I could, we can do with it now, but I don't want to do that for this melody. I want to keep it plain as it is. So now I've bounced out that MIDI pan to an audio file. I no longer need this MIDI pan. At least I don't think I need it. So I'm going to delete that pan. 
I'm just going to tap on this bar here, which shows me all the patterns for this bank. I'm going to delete the pattern from here. So it's fully removed. Let's unmute Pure Synth. Let's turn off these effects for now. I don't think I'm going to need them. Um, let's even, let's remove them even. And yep, that's freed up Pure Synth now for me to create another pattern with it. The alternative, of course, is you could just duplicate or add another instance of Pure Synth. With the iPad Pro and a lot of the newer iPads, you can have multiple instances of Pure Synth. But I'm just giving you an example here of how you can bounce out your MIDI patterns into audio files so you can reuse a same instance of Pure Synth Platinum without taking up your CPU or your RAM. So let's, um, let's add to this melody now. Let's find another sound to add to it. I think I'm going to add some brass to it. Maybe some trumpets. So I've got the melody down. I think it's pretty good basis to go off and start making this beat. So I think I'm going to make this a drill beat, but this is going to be a drill beat with bounce. If you checked out my beats already on my new channel, you already know I'm onto some hot newness with the drill wave. I'm calling it trip drill. And the way to achieve this is beat maker free. And if you've got any drum triplet syncopation needs, head over to the quantization section of your recording settings. And here you've got quantize sync. And for this, I change it to one over eight and triplet. And now we can go ahead and start making a hi-hats and you can hear what I'm talking about. All right, so I've got that recorded in. What I like to do for hi-hat patterns uh, nowadays, I like to just record maybe the first four bars or first eight bars of a pattern. And then I work on those eight bars of the hi-hat pattern. Then I can choose to duplicate it over 16 and then, and then add variation where I see fit. So we've got our triplet bounce in there. And when you go into the pattern window, you're going to notice that the MIDI notes are not snapping to any grid in particular. In fact, some of them are, some of them are off. And the reason for that is because your pattern window is set to a normal drum syncopation. So if you change it to triplets, and then change it to one eighth. You can see now they fold in the right grid spaces. So here's our here's our hi hat pattern, very much like a drill hi hat pattern, but it's over a triplet drum syncopation as I've said earlier. I'm gonna open up our pattern MIDI window because I'm gonna need that a lot for this. I'm gonna go in and start fiddling around with this and throwing in some rolls and just making this pattern bouncy, and then um, see the finished result. Another gem for you guys when you're editing the velocity of MIDI notes, you've got two great tools here in Beatmaker 3. You've got a step editor here, which you can use if you select any grid space in your pattern MIDI window, you can manipulate the velocity of that selected node. And if you drag along, you can adjust the velocity of other MIDI notes too. Another great tool as well for, for creating hi-hat rolls in the pattern MIDI window is the linear tool. If I select this, I select a grid space of any one node and then drag along and down, I can create MIDI rolls. So this is a great alternative to hi-hat rolls, where previously I've showed you, you can create hi-hat rolls in live performance using the roll section in the pad view. You can create these also in the pattern MIDI window. So another gem for you guys. So we're going to throw in some other hi-hats and counter snares in just to get the hi-hat rolls in and to, to give it that bounce. You're already getting the idea of Trippy Drill, right? Different wave, different wave.
in let's throw in some stairs i'm gonna throw in some snares and some claps because i think the claps what i found the claps are giving me that extra it's just giving you an extra bounciness to these kind of beats so you you'll understand when i get these claps in So we've got the snares in, we've got the hi-hats in. Next to the 808s. And for me, there are two options. You could either go with a short 808, like a, a little baby, the baby type beat, or you could go for a longer 808, which you'd find in more conventional draw type beats. I think we're gonna go for the longer one in this instance. So let's find ourselves a simple long 808 to chuck in. It's nothing without perks and transitions, so let's throw those in. So there you have it guys, trippy drill, that's what I'm calling it to his sticks. Let me know in the comments who you can hear rapping to this, who you can hear riding this wave. Definitely go and check out the beats on my Beats channel as well. Show some love, like I said. Let's get them subs up. Um, I've gone ahead and arranged the beats, so stick around. I've got to play that at the end. If you're new to the channel, you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to my Beats channel as well. Drop a comment, drop a like on this video. Let me know what you liked in it. Let me know what you want to see going forward. But as always, guys, keep cooking. <laughs> he and I on the track